My name is Dave Savage and I am a ham operator also known as amateur radio. Now there's three classes of uh, amateur radio operator or ham and that is the technician class, the general class, and the extra class. This particular series is geared to help you obtain your technician class license. Now the tests are not particularly difficult. All of the questions and the answers are published. It's just a matter of learning the material and maybe a little bit of memorization. And I don't think you don't have too much uh, calculator in this particular test. If it is, we'll go over the simple math required for it. Now there is a potential of 400 questions and we will be going all uh, over all 400 questions, not in this video. I'm going to have to break it up into several videos, but I'll try to keep them grouped into like subject matter. Now the actual test itself is comprised of 35 questions and you only have to have, I believe, a 75 to pass the test. So but the fact that we have an ample supply of test, online testing tools the questions and answers are published and with this videos, with this series of videos, I think you'll be able to take your technician class license in just a very short period of time. Okay, so if you're ready, let's get started learning how to be a ham operator. Alright, in this part of the uh, training we're going to talk about FCC rules, descriptions, and definitions for the amateur radio service, operator, and station license responsibility. Now, what they basically want you to learn is this. What is amateur radio service? What's the purpose of the amateur radio service? What's the purpose of the amateur satellite service, operator, primary station license grant, where FCC rules are codified, uh, the basis and the purpose of FCC rules, the meaning of basic terms used in FCC rules. Okay, um, let me get right into it. Here's the type of question that you're going to be seeing in this, this segment. For whom is the amateur radio service intended? A person who has messages to broadcast to the public, a person who needs communications for the activities of their immediate family members, relatives, and friends. A person who needs two-way communication for personal reasons. Persons who are interested in radio technique solely with a personal aim and without pecuniary interest. Okay, now this portion right here that I just highlighted is the actual sections of the FCC rule book per se, it's uh, Title 97, where you can find the answer to this question. And we'll come back to that question in just a minute. Don't, don't get too tied up on that right now. So you can go to the internet and I'll put, I'll have links to all this uh, on the website. This is the actual uh, rules and regulations of the FCC that govern amateur radio service. And as you see right here that point three, 97.3 refers to definitions. And we can also go down and look at the A4 from the actual FCC document that says amateur service, a radio communication service for the purpose of self-training, intercommunications and technology investigation carried out by amateurs that is duly authorized persons that means you got a license interest in radio tech techniques solely for the personal aim without pecuniary interests and what does that mean no money you can't take money for being an amateur radio it's just like football Amateur league football don't make no money. Professional football players make money. All right, so the rest of the classes, this is the way we're going to lay it out. On this side over here, I will give you the question and the answers to pick from. 
on this side over here, I will give you the section of the rules uh, where the answer to that is. And then down here, I may just give you a little uh, visual aid to help you remember that. All right, so the uh, answer to this question then is a person or persons, excuse me, who are interested in radio technique solely with a personal aim and without pecuniary interest. Why did they have to use that word? I don't get it. All right, let's get to the next. Here's the question. What agency regulates and enforces the rules for the amateur radio service in the United States? Well, let's look at it. Okay, it's referring to 97.1. Now, when I find uh, discrepancies like this, I'll, I'll point them out to you. Because if you actually read 97.1, it doesn't tell you. It doesn't give you the answer to this question. It's actually in Appendix 1 to Part 97, where it says, uh, Places where the amateur radio service is regulated by FCC. So, this is the FCC. That's their goober little logo. Remember these guys? These are the guys that had no sense of humor during the Super Bowl halftime. So the answer to that question is going to be the FCC. All right, let's move on to question three. And that is, which part of the FCC rules contain the rules and regulations governing the amateur radio service? Uh, I've seen this on many, many uh, formats the way these questions are printed. and if you notice they leave off something here why would they do that well let's pull up the question number one and you see on question number one they actually specify what part of the rules that question is coming from uh, so they tried to be sneaky this one but that's okay because we know the amateur radio service is part 97 of title 47 Okay, now just a visual reminder, it is, here's a 97, okay, maybe this 97, another 97, one more 97. They're all street signs. Have you ever noticed there's not really many good pictures out there to re represent 97? So the answer to the question, which part of the FCC rules contain the rules and regulations governing the amateur radio service, it would be D, part 97. Okay, let's uh, look at question four now. Uh, which of the following meets the FCC definition of harmful interference? Our choices are radio transmission that annoy users of a repeater, unwanted radio transmissions that cause costly harm to radio station apparatus, that which seriously degrades, obstructs, or repeatedly interrupts a radio communication service operating in accordance with radio regulations. Or, static from a lightning storm. Well, again, we see that uh, this is going to come from uh, Part 97, 3, Paragraph 23, and it states very clearly, Interference which endangers the functionality, functioning, excuse me, of a radio navigation service or other safety services or seriously degrades, obstructs, or repeatedly interrupts a radio communication service operating in accordance with radio regulations. What that basically means is when you're doing this, you can't be interrupting your next door neighbor's Judge Judy. Or, well, ain't no Oprah anymore. Had to be Judge Judy. So the question answer then is C. That which seriously degrades, obstructs, or repeatedly interrupts a radio communication service operating in accordance with radio regulations. Okay, moving on to question number five. What is the FCC Part 97 definition of a space station? 
A, any multi-stage satellite, B, an Earth satellite that carries one or more amateur operators, and boy, wouldn't that be fun, or C, an amateur station located less than 25 kilometers above the Earth's surface, or D, an amateur station located more than 50 kilometers above the Earth's surface. And we're going to find the answer to that in 97.3, paragraph 40, which is going to read, Space Station, an amateur station located more than 50 kilometers above the Earth's surface, which simply means this. That's correct. As a technician class ham operator, you can use satellites to communicate all the way around the world, assuming that that satellite is more than 50 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Which is going to make the answer to this question D, an amateur station located more than 50 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Okay, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, just bear in mind we've got 400 questions to go through. It's, it's not complicated and I'm sure you'll have no problem whatsoever. Just remember you can repeat these videos as many times as you necessary before you get the questions of these answers down. And I'm going to put a link right here to the next video in the series so that if you've got these questions down you can move right on. Now I'm sure, I'm positive that with just a little bit of study and going through all the videos in this series, you will be able to pass the amateur radio technician class license in no time at all. Thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate it.